Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're covering the evolution of Willy Wonka. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, 1971. In his first on-screen appearance, Willy Wonka set out on a quest to find someone morally upright and loyal to inherit his chocolate factory after his retirement. He placed five golden tickets in his chocolate bars and the lucky ones to find those tickets were to have an exclusive tour of his factory. His secret motive was to test them so that whoever was loyal and unselfish among the five would inherit his wealth. This is the great glass Wonkavator. It's an elevator. It's a Wonkavator. An elevator can only go up and down, but the Wonkavator can go sideways and slantways and long ways. Futurama, 1999. In the final episode of the first season, Fry won a contest to visit the Slurm factory, but things took a turn when he discovered the real factory and learned of the contents of his favorite drink. The episode was in homage to the Willy Wonka film and the owner of the Slurm factory wore an outfit with similarities to Willy Wonka. Welcome to the planet Wormulon. I'm Glurmo, your gollyrific guide to the splentacular Slurm factory. Uh-huh. Can we have our free Slurm now? You'll have all the Slurm you can drink later on. Hey Arnold, 2000. The Munkerman was a superhero who wore a purple suit and had a hairstyle that was reminiscent of Wonka in the 1971 film. The storyline followed Arnold who gave Monkey Man a taste of what it felt like to live a normal life. Monkey Man became attached to the life he was introduced to care about helping the weak. Uh, what do you think? Well, I for one think it's ma uh, <coughs> marvelously minimalistic and jejun. Ah, ah, brilliant, jejun. Family Guy 2000. This episode borrowed heavily from the 1971 film. Peter won a silver ticket to visit the Pawtucket Beer Factory. Pawtucket Pat's outfit and curly-like hair with the tall hat bore great similarities to what Willy Wonka wore. He also had little helpers known as the Chumbawambas just like Willy Wonka's helpers known as the Oompa Loompas. Peter and Brian broke the rules by entering Pawtucket's carbonation room and drinking his incomplete beer, and he kicked them both out of his factory. What the hell is this? Didn't you see that sign? You've sullied my factory and disobeyed my rules. I want you to leave immediately. Oh, come on. Don't I at least get a Chumbawamba, son? <sighs> Fine. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, 2005. This musical fantasy film was an adaptation of the 1971 film. The plot followed Charlie who visited the factory with four other kids after winning the golden tickets. Unlike in the first movie, the story showed how Charlie helped Willy Wonka save his factory and helped Willy reconcile with his father whom he had not talked to in a long while by showing him the value and importance of family. All these years, and you haven't flossed. Not once. Epic Movie, 2007. The parody movie featured different references from various movies and TV shows and mimicked different celebrities. Unlike the usual film outline, there were four tickets and when the tickets were won and the winners visited Willie, he revealed his plot to use the winners as a special ingredient in his treats. Do you want to know? It makes all my candy taste so special. Uh-huh. It's a special secret ingredient. The Office, 2009. Michael started a Willy Wonka-inspired promotion where he was to provide discounts to customers who received the golden tickets. He opted to shift the blame on his colleague when the promotion was estimated to cause huge losses for the company. Michael's dress code and act heavily resonated with Willy Wonka. I am Willy Wonka! Good morning, Mr. Wonka. Here are your messages. Why, thank you very much! <gasps> what are those? What are those? Tell me, please! Jelly beans. No, no, no! Tom and Jerry, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, 2017. This film was an animated adaptation of the 1971 film and it told a modern twist of the story. After locking up his factory for three years, Willy Wonka decided to place five golden tickets in his chocolate bars and the lucky winners would get a tour of his factory. He set up a fake rival named Slugworth who told the winners that he would pay them lots of money if they could steal a sample of a special candy called the Everlasting Gobstopper. In truth, Willy Wonka was trying to find someone loyal and truthful to inherit his factory. So Charlie, how did you like my factory? Mr. Wonka? It's the most wonderful place in the whole wide world. I'm happy to hear you say that, because I'm giving it to you. Huh? You're giving your factory to Charlie? Absolutely. Rick and Morty, 2017. Rick and Morty encountered a visiting Rick and Morty from the Citadel of Ricks. At Citadel were various versions of Rick. Rick D. Sanchez III wore outfits similar to Wonka such as the purple suit with a green undershirt and tie, a top hat, and a golden cane that he carried around. 
He was the owner of Simple Rick's Wafer Cookie Factory. I'm Rick D. Sanchez III, owner of this here wafer establishment, and I say that the Rick in there is right. He's more Rick than any of you. He's a terrorist! What Rick isn't? Wonka, 2023. This film adaptation tells the origin story of the famous Willy Wonka in his early days as a chocolatier. The story depicts a young and poor Wonka who has nothing but a heart full of dreams of changing the world with his tasty delight. Along the way, he realizes that his dream is not so simple because the chocolate industry is run by a cartel of greedy chocolatiers. That of all the chocolate I have ever tasted, this is without doubt the absolute 100% worst. Woo! There we have it, ladies and gentlemen, an endorsement from Mr. S Wait, the worst? Thank you for watching this video. Please share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our awesome uploads.